Did she turn 16 shades of green? She started shaking like a leaf because what she had done, she committed fraud. She took that oath of office and she left it on the copy machine back there and she didn't bring me back my copy. She didn't bring me back the original because she knew what was going on. So when I gave her the last one, I said, now when you leave with this one, I expect you to bring this one back to me. So I went this original and I want you to bring me back another one. And she turned around and when she went back to the corner, we seen the judge peek up behind the door, didn't we? Because he knew he'd been had. I'm telling you right now. The problem is he wasn't really had because it's a corporation, okay? And I agreed to the terms and conditions somewhere along the way. When I pointed that out to him, I said, because your oath of office is in the box, it's a four corners rule, the seal doesn't pertain to the oath, and the person that signed it didn't sign it all the way on the paperwork, so this is all fraud, and you sent it to me with the intent for fraud. And if you don't have an oath of office, all cases that you have heard in the last 10 years, or since this thing was signed in 1993, are all void. No and I handed it to him over the bench so he could read it. And when he saw that, the attorney knew his boss man was cooked. And so they both conspired real quick and said, could you please contain the defendant? And I went, uh-oh. <laughs> Would you please make the defendant shut up? He's make, making a ruckus here. And I went, I'm not saying a word. What's going on here? The next thing I knew, they pulled a fast one on me, and I was in the county slammer for five days. But that's How'd a... Uh, get out? I was nice to the jailer. I made friends while I was in there. They let me out. But anyway, so this, this four corners rule is, is really an incredible thing if you understand how it works. When you read documents, start looking for it. Anything that's in a square box does not pertain to the contract. And everything is a contract that you get, whether it's a bill, a ticket, an offer. Anything that comes from the court is, is an offer. Now I'm going to show you something else that works out. Let's say this is the courtroom. Backing up a little bit, where you talk about where you send in a bill and you write your amount in the box and you send it in and they put it in a secret account and after three and a half years they say it's abandoned and they take the money. How do you go about saying it isn't abandoned? I want my money back. If you this have guy said, answer, fine. If you don't, you've got an area to research. <laughs> If I, <laughs> that's a great that's a great question, but I, I I really can't answer that. And the reason why I can't is because there's a there's a trust between the trust account called your SESQ birth certificate trust, and um, the people that are managing that birth certificate trust. It'd be like me jumping over the fence into the plantation and telling the slaves you don't have to work tomorrow. There's a hundred of us. We can take the boss. Okay, I can't do that. So as the as the plantation owner slaves sneak out one at a time and come on over to my house for some banana pudding. We can talk about that stuff, okay? You understand what I'm saying? I, I got it. Okay, now when you walk into court, do you remember, um, do you remember the, the old saying, you're hung by the words of your mouth? You can't catch a fish if he keeps his mouth shut. And then they tell you, they give you, they give you notice. They tell you anything you say can and will be. They're going to use everything you say because they're going to twist it, they're going to turn it, they're going to do whatever. So if you don't say anything, okay, about your case... You win. Now, I'm going to show you why. When you walk into a court, I'm going to make this a square box right here. This is a separate deal over here. You walk in, let's say this is the doors coming in, and they have the peanut gallery right here, right? Everybody recognize that? And you got all these seats. Yeah. I call them the church pew, and then there's another gate right here. Right. And that's called the bar. The bar stands for British Accredited Registry, but that's where you get on the ship. Now, you, you know they have these posts like this, and it looks like the side of a ship? Yeah. That's notice. You're about to board an enemy vessel. Now, there's a, there's a couple that don't have them because they can't afford them. I think they use them to keep the place warm in the wintertime. They burn them in the fireplace or whatever. But anyway, uh, there is a bar somewhere. And if, you, if there isn't one, you say to the judge, Excuse me, sir, further on the record, where's the bar? Where's the uh, bow of your ship? Where's the stern of your ship? I, I, don't, I don't recognize it. They'll know what you're talking about. Okay, so if these guys say anything in your case back here in this box, how does it help or hurt your case? It doesn't because you can't hear it. Over here there's a jury, and this is where the jury sits, and what are they sitting in? Box. Can they hear anything you're saying? No. It's all for show. It's a dog and pony show. Now up here on the left side, well, let's, let's go ahead and use this one. This is where the guy in the black robe sits, and he's sitting in a what? Box. Okay. And next to him, there's a clerk of the court. And then over here, we've got maybe a stenographer. And over here, we've got a witness stand. So anybody that's testifying, what are they in? Okay, so there's only two guys in this box. And that's called the court. It's like a basketball game. In common law, this is how all this works. Once they get you on their ship, none of this works. So you got to be careful how you get on the ship. This guy shoots a cannonball at you and you shoot a cannonball back. This guy shoots a cannonball, and you shoot a cannonball back. Okay? 
And the last guy to shoot a cannonball wins. The Bible says the last man to walk away wins. The first man to leave the battlefield loses. So he says something, and you say something, and he says something, and you say something, and you're getting hung by the words of your mouth every time you talk because they don't care what you're saying. What you're saying is, you must have been there. You must have been in the car. You must have been speeding. There's a couple of guys who went to court with me, and I won hands down, and I never, ever said I was on the motorcycle doing 55, 45. I wasn't. I didn't say any of that. And I didn't bring up the, the whole point. Because the, the cop got up here and talked in this bench. He got up there on the witness stand. Now, how many people have been to a court and had a cop just tell the story from over here? If you get him in the box, whatever they're saying doesn't matter because the judge can't hear it. It's not part of the record. I know it sounds crazy. But he physically hears it. Right? He can hear it. What I said to him was the uh, officer started talking, and I said, excuse me, objection. And the judge says, what are you objecting to? And I said, is he going to swear in? And the judge says, raise your right hand and swear after me. And the cop looked at me and looked at him like, wow, I've never sworn in before. So he swore him in. Now he's taken an oath, taken an oath on the word that he was going to tell the truth. So he started talking. I go, Objection. The judge goes, what are you objecting to now? I said, is he going to get on the witness stand? And so he says, would you like to take the witness stand? And the officer said, okay, I'll take the witness stand. I'm not kidding you guys. I'm not kidding you. So he went around here and got on here and talked. Now when he got all done, I said to the judge, I said, look, I'm here in honor. I'm a secure party creditor. Where's the bill? I haven't gotten an order. And the judge said, I'd like to move to my verdict. And I said, I object. You move to your verdict. Required to give me remedy here. Where's my remedy? And the judge says, I'd like to move to my verdict if you would, please. Now, this is a shortened version because it went for about 15 minutes. I wanted to throw up 14 of it. He says, in the matter of the state of Arizona versus William Del Faust, I find that the officer did not properly identify William Del Faust. Therefore, I must dismiss the ticket. And he slammed his gavel, got him, walked out, and I went, wow, that, that went fast. What happened? And Hal goes, oh, yeah, can you believe it worked? <laughs> <laughs> the cop knows me. He's known me for 10 years. He knows me nine years before he wrote me the ticket. And he said, I don't understand what just happened. And I said, you probably won't ever understand. I'm not going to tell you what I did. <laughs> and we walked out of there that day, and that cop was just shaking his head like, I don't, I don't get it. You're William Del Faust. I got you. I saw you. I did this. I wrote you the ticket. You showed up in court. I did everything right. And the, and the cop said, what are you, friends with the judge? It was like $1,400 worth of fines. <laughs> yeah, $1,400 worth of fines, and I never argued about any of it. I just said, yeah, give me the deal. Go ahead. Did you give the court your name? I didn't. There's three contracts. Does this make sense to you, 3, 3, and 3? Your Social Security has nine numbers. There's a lot of things that have 3, 3, and 3. Okay. The first thing the judge asks you is, what's your name? First, middle, and last. That's three. Is anybody's name really what they call you? I mean, nobody around here calls me William. Call me Bill. So I said to the judge, my name is Bill. I'm here as a friend of the court, Amicus Curaway, Curay, would, uh, and, I, and I'd like to help out the court. Is there anything I can do in that capacity? So he says, are you, in fact, Mr. Faust? Now, Mr. is a fiction. Mr. Faust is actually the all capital letters name because that's a fiction. So I said, uh, no, my name is Bill. I wanted to tell him, my, fr my friends call me Bill, my kids call me Dad, my wife calls me Good Looking. <laughs> but don't you call me Good Looking, sir. I said, if you would, please call me Bill. That would be great. So he said, are you in fact Mr. Faust? Now, if I would have said yes, I would have lied, wouldn't I? Because in fact, I am not a fiction. So they're just looking for you to lie. So I said, no, my name is Bill. And if you would, and he interrupted me. I said, excuse me, you interrupt. So he said, uh, would you please take the defendant's chair? And he pointed to the defendant's chair. It was right about here. So I walked up and I go, uh, would it be all right if I took that chair as a secure party creditor with all my unleanable rights in full effect? And he didn't say anything. I said, for the record... No one's objected to me taking the seat with my unleanable rights in full effect. What Therefore, are you, what are you saying? Unleanable? unleanable? Unleanable. I call him unleanable. Doesn't that make more sense? He can't lean my rights. They wrote it unalienable. Right. But if you get to the root of it, it's unleanable. Unalienable. That means they can't lean your rights. See, when you walk in there, if you give up your rights, they're leaning on it. So I said, so since no one has objected to that, I'm going to go ahead and enter these proceedings under my own terms and conditions. And therefore, I feel comfortable sitting here, so I'm just going to sit on this side of the ship. Only I didn't say ship. I said, I'm going to sit on this side of the bar. I said, you can continue. How's that for telling the judge what to do? <laughs> so where did, where did you sit down then? So then I sat down right over here in the peanut gallery with my oh, buddies. Okay. okay. I got some moral support. 
They were poking me in the back and shooting me with paper clips. <laughs> but anyway, so then he said, what's your address? There's your address. Street, city, state. So I said, well, the proof of claim that you have here today, does it require that? And he said, I ask you a question. And I said, uh, I'll give you that upon proof of claim. So then he asked me the next thing. What's your birthday? Now, let me tell you what your birthday is. Day, month, and year. Now, they just snuck it right by you. Just snuck it by you. Because they spell birth. And when did you bring your vessel into our port so that we could tax you? That's what they're asking. So here's how I handled that. Sir, I could not possibly tell you what my birthday was. I was awful young when I was born. And if I told you what day my parents told me, that would be hearsay. And hearsay is inadmissible in a court of law. Good going, buddy. Now, this is all stuff that I thought up. A lot of it I, ca I got from the, the anti-terrorist on the video. If you watch anti-terrorist, he's really great on avoiding all this stuff. But at some point, you've got to quit avoiding, and you've got to get in there, and you've got to have some contact with the judge. So he interrupted me again, and I told him, you've interrupted me twice. If you do that again... You're in dishonor. Now, what do they call him? Honorable whatever. Okay? He has to act in honor. So I said to him, do you, have you taken an oath of office? And he said, I have. And I said, do you have that oath here today? He said, well, it's in the back. I said, did you swear on the word of God when you took that oath? He said, I did. I said, did you sign it? He said, I did. So I said, I adjudicate your oath of office here today in this matter. Do I need to explain that to you? <laughs> he said, yeah, why don't you explain that to me? Uh, if I'm lying, I'm dying. I said it. I said it just like that. I said, you want me to explain that to you? He says, yeah, why don't you explain that to me? So that means you can't practice law from the bench. That means you can't counsel from the bench. That means you're here as a mediator only, and it's between me and this guy right here. Do you understand that? Now, I want to tell you that I filed some stuff in on the private side before I went to court. You guys need to understand that. I filed some stuff on the private side before I went into the court, so the judge kind of had an idea who I was there before I got there. Okay? So that makes things go a little simpler. But at, at some point, you guys are going to have to stand up for yourself and let them know that you, you're you not a U.S. citizen, if that's what you choose not to be. If you want to be a U.S. citizen, I was one for 50, 40, 48 years, 49 years. As this goes on, you see all these boxes are really in my favor because this guy is acting... He's acting because he's Officer Jones. Whenever you put a, a name in front of somebody's name, it turns them into an actor. And he's acting because he's part of the DMV Act. And you can tell that they're all acting because they wear costumes. He was wearing an officer's costume when he showed up. He's wearing an officer's costume when he pulled me over. This is funny, isn't it? And the judge, he's wearing a costume. He's acting like a judge. So who's the only real man in the audience? Yeah. Me. You see what I'm saying, guys? This is all very simple. The Republic is, is there for us to, to use and to work it. All you have to do is study, study, study. Now, I'm not, I'm not giving anybody any coaching here because I will tell you that if you get in there and you don't understand what's going on, they're going to turn you around. But it's okay to learn. I've learned, and at the very end I said, hey, I, I, I'm sorry I messed up. I asked for your forgiveness. And if you ask the judge for your forgiveness, for his forgiveness, and you make him say yes or no before you can move on, that hides a multitude of sins. Remember that one. <laughs> That's, <also scriptural. laughs> That's right. Because forgiveness is what? Debt? Our debtors? Has a, all this is biblical, guys. If we, if we sat down, I could, t I could whip out the Word of God and I could show you exactly how we've gotten into the point of no return with several exits coming up that you can get off and turn around and get your boat going the other way.